There are five specific mistakes we see lots of people making when building apps on Bubble. And today we're breaking down what each one of those is, plus how you can avoid them. These are mistakes you might be making right now with your app without even realizing it. And they could lead to an unscalable, poorly performing app in the long run. So stick around to the end to steer clear of these problem areas. It's Gabby over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. Now let's jump right into mistake number one, which is focusing on building the logic of your bubble app prior to the database structure. Most bubble applications are very data-driven, which means that you need to have a strong data architecture set up before you really dive into the core functionality of your application, right? A data-driven application typically means passing data between pages, things are much more dynamic, your user should be able to create entries in that database and modify those records as well. You wanna be able to display that information back to the users when they're searching for something, right? You should be able to manipulate that information so that things are formatted in a certain way. You want to be able to create relationships between your data. That way you can have really clean, organized, efficient, and scalable uh, applications and features that run off of that data. Uh, you may want to be able to perform calculations. If your app is very math heavy, if you're working with financial based applications or um, you know dashboards or analytics, you might want to do some aggregations. And so how you store this information into your database is really important and does have a ripple effect on how the front end designs may come together or the logic comes together. And of course, you want to be able to create custom privacy rules around who can access what data. And you can only do that once you have your structure set up first. A lot of people are skipping this part and diving straight into the design and just kind of throwing things on the page to see what works. And it doesn't work that way. You have to focus on your database structure before anything else. The next common mistake we see is creating too many static designs in the application. This can become a problem because you're limiting yourself. Dynamic designs, on the other hand, allow you to create a more scalable application that can really evolve with your users, with your growing data over time. Okay, and Bubble has many different places in the editor that allow you to create dynamic structures, everything from your front end designs, right? Using reusable elements, for example, using conditional statements to change behaviors and appearance properties when the, those conditions are met to your workflows, right? You can create a lot of streamlined flows, again, with conditional statements, you can make things more scalable in that way. And then of course, in your database structure, and we've actually got an example here on the screen of uh, comparing a static structure to a dynamic structure that achieves the same thing, but you'll see that you get more benefits out of the dynamic structure. So on the left, we have a data type for a company profile, right? We might wanna save the company's name, their logo, and then just their general website. But then let's say this application wants to capture all of their social network uh, profile links, right? So the users can link out to them and see their profiles on all the popular networks. So with this static structure, there's hard coded fields that have been created for five separate links. Well, that's a problem. What if the company has more links than five? What if there are new networks that come onto the scene that become popular? You've really limited yourself here with this type of structure. It's not wrong, but you're gonna hit a ceiling very quickly as things evolve. Compare it to the structure on the right. Now we're actually introducing a second data type to help us with this, but it's much more effective. So the company profile record on the right has just the name, the logo, and the general website, but then there is a relationship field that links out to a list of other records, a list of social link records. And because the company will now be in control of creating however many social links they need for whichever networks that they have their profiles on, this is a much more dynamic structure. You do not need to anticipate a certain number of links that a company may have. So be careful with creating too many static designs in your application. This isn't to say that static designs are wrong. There, there are definitely cases where it makes sense to make those decisions for your users. But be mindful of how scalable some of those structures might be. Be mindful of how much extra work it's going to require you to, to, to go through if a change needs to happen, right? Make this application work for you, not the other way around. The next common mistake we see is ignoring the issue checker in your editor and also your database as a way to troubleshoot problems in your application. Look, we are not going to get the logic right from the beginning. This is very normal. You're going to encounter issues. You're going to need to troubleshoot them, need to solve them. This is how you learn. This is how you get better 
at um, creating the right kind of logic, not just so that things are technically correct and they are actually function for your users, but so they are the most efficient approach to things in your application. Your issue checker is there for a reason. It's producing issues for a reason. Don't ignore them. You're gonna create extra work for yourself if you leave that issue to grow to you know, over 100, 200 issues. We've definitely seen that. And it just creates a bigger mess in your editor. Address those issues because oftentimes you'll find that you need to correct a sequence of things just from clearing out one issue. And you don't wanna leave those hanging around too long because then your testing environments could actually be inaccurate, right? The less issues you have present, the more accurate your testing is actually going to be. Um, and also your database, use that as a testing tool, as a troubleshooting tool. Check your tables, make sure that your records are getting created properly, the relationships are being stored properly. Another common mistake we see is designing your logic without any visual cues for your users. It's very likely that you're creating something that's interactive. Right, your users are going to make selections, they're gonna click buttons, they're gonna fill out forms, they're gonna create data in the database. And if you're not giving them any kind of visual feedback that things are happening in the application, they're going to think it's broken and that's a problem. So you need to make sure that you create visual cues with any, any interactivity that would otherwise be invisible, right? Where things would happen behind the scenes. So for example, uh, let's say that your users fill out a form, right? They enter in their name, their email, um, they add some other pieces of information and clicking on a button creates a new record in the database. Well, that's technically invisible to them. If they click that button, you know, without any other logic added into that workflow, the page is not going to do anything. Bubble is not going to assume to show the user some kind of a success message. You actually have to tell Bubble to do those things. So with the simple resetting of the inputs, which is an action you could add in there, right? So it clears the form. It lets the user know that their, their information was submitted. In addition to showing some kind of a success alert message or a confirmation message, right? That really helps the user close the loop. It helps them understand that, okay, the action I took was completed. The application has received that information from me and now I can move on. Okay, now we're not all user experience designers, that's okay, but it's a little tip like this that you just want to be mindful of as you build things out. And these things may become apparent to you as you test your own application um, from the user's perspective, but just be mindful of it as you put together the logic and the designs and all of these flows. Keep your users aware of what's going on in the application. Help them, right? Don't make them think too much. Things should be more intuitive when they're experiencing your app. Another mistake that we see happen all the time applies to everyone, no matter what type of application you're building. And that is relying on too many plugins. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of plugins out there that we use all the time. We love them because they do fantastic work and they do extend the capabilities of your application. But you wanna be careful with how much dependency you have on external plugins, right? If you have a ton of plugins installed into your application, each one of those is a separate dependency. You're dependent on the publisher keeping that plugin updated. You're dependent on the publisher keeping that plugin bug free. So plugins are great when you really can't build out the functionality yourself, um, but if you can, right? And it might require some creativity, right? You may need to combine different native bubble elements and custom logic, custom states, and you know things need to come together to create the same outcome. Uh, but it is very much worth the control you have, not to mention all of the learning that you'll go through by putting something like that together. Okay, so do your homework when you install plugins. I'm not saying that plugins are bad. There's certainly a time and a place, and there's a lot of really great ones out there, but do your homework, make sure that they're reliable, um, and that it makes sense to depend on that plugin versus building out the same kind of functionality yourself if possible. There are, of course, lots of different things you'll want to avoid when building your app on Bubble. And to take a full deep dive into this, join our free extended training at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. We'll guide you on how to build your no-code app correctly so you don't run into surprise issues down the road. Join us at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop.